Well, as we think about our health, a lot of times we just automatically go to the physical side. What are we eating? How are we exercising? Of course, we know that our emotional health and our spiritual health is just important. What if we were able to combine all of them to be the very best version that we could be of ourselves, what God calls us to be? Oh, my next author is not just the best version of herself, but she helps to coach us to be the best versions of ourselves. Her name is Susan Kambik Tracy, and she's currently at the London Book Fair. Um, yeah, she's sharing her book, Live Your Now, a simple meditation inspired by the seven chakras and gratitude. I had to get that last word because that and gratitude is very important, Susan. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Susan, would you share about your book? What's the overall message about being our best? Live your now? Well, first of all, I believe it's possible for all of us to live our now and make our lives more interesting, more curious, more enthusiastic, and more giving. Because when you live in the present, you're more able to see the gifts that you have that you can also give to others. So it's not just one way, I feel better, that's it. It's that I feel better, I'm more able to participate in my community and be a, a shining light for my community as well. Uh, mm. I started this book because I was fortunate enough to have a, a very well-known cardiologist uh, as a private client. And so when I worked with her and I was introducing the chakras, which are considered wheels of energy uh, up and down the spine from the root chakra at the bottom to the crown chakra at the top, uh, I learned so much more about how they relate to our health in terms of the organs that they service, that they send messages back and forth and revive and heal and nourish. Mm -hmm. So this doctor, Sandra, really helped me see the scientific and the medical aspects of the chakras as well. And so we worked on them in depth and we researched them on depth in depth. And we also uh, experienced and created hand motions called mudras that helped us meditate and concentrate our attention on each of the chakras. So that's part of the book is a wonderful meditation. But I feel that in the process of studying this and working with a scientist, a medical doctor, I was able as a yoga instructor, as someone that works more for the soul and the creativity of each human being, that we lifted it and enlarged it to be something that was bigger than what I had originally thought they were about. So the book tell, is to tell share me more them. about that. Yeah, tell me, I'm I'm very fascinated by that part. What tell me more what you mean by that? Well, I feel that a lot of books talk about certain things like the chakras, but they give you it's it's very involved and you have to study so many different layers mm -hmm. of understanding mm -hmm. that you kind of miss out on the parts that are more accessible to every person. Mm. So when I teach yoga, um, I really work with the heart chakra first, which really is about the lungs and the heart, which I think are the mother and the father of the human body. They kind of like are the two main leaders. And then they work with the nervous system and each of the chakras, the root chakra uh, grounds us. It helps us to be stable and balanced. The sacral chakra is really about the the sexual organs and our creativity. That's where they believe creativity is nourished and kind of invigorated. And then the, uh, the sacral, the, I'm sorry, the solar plexus chakra, which is really around the belly, the belly button. And that is often where we hold our emotions. And this is scientifically presented. So in the book, you will see us taking mm -hmm. different topics and then I will give my point of view as a yoga teacher on it. And Sandra will give her point of view as a medical professional, heart doctor, and um, scientist. And it's, so then 
we go up to the, I've mentioned the heart chakra, mm -hmm. and then we go up to the throat chakra, which is about speaking your truth, only your mm -hmm. truth, but with heart, from the heart, and then from the next chakra, which gives us the top three, the next chakra being the third eye chakra. So you want wisdom and intuition and heart to give you the ability to speak truth to everyone, but with kindness. And then the last chakra being the crown chakra, which is really about higher levels of thinking and connection to things outside of the body, more the actual bigger universe around us, as well as the mind. So that's a quick, quick review of the seven chakras, three lower, three higher, and the heart in the middle. I'm so glad that you finished because I started to cut you off. And what you said was so important. It completed the thought of this being a, a full healing process, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I believe that it probably leads to financial. And I mean, just in all ways, when you pay attention to these, what, six, you said upper and lower? Well, the three lower are the grounding and the kind of rooting chakras mm -hmm. that really make you a stable Mm -hmm. person and and help you to be more stable just ground yourself root your your kind of metaphorically um you know tree-like roots into the earth to hold you and yet still give you the ability to move and then the three upper are more the spiritual the mental and the intuitive areas of our body and everything is just surrounding the heart so everything is enlarging our ability to be kind, enlarging our ability to be loving. Mm. And uh, in fact, later on in this expanded version, which Maple Leaf has just published for me, uh, I added 12 essays. And one of the essays is all about how to be loving and kind and flow loving kindness. But then the next essay is about how do you become loving and kind when you don't feel loving or kind? You know, so it's a little of the reality of lives that we can say, ideally, this is how you get better. But practically, what do you do when you're right. not feeling um, that you want to, that you you even can attain that loving kindness to yourself, which has to come first? Absolutely. Susan, boy, there's so much that I want to say. First of all, I believe that we can't give to others until we're filled. We can only give what we have and when we're dry and empty we have nothing else to give so what you're saying is that it's not selfish for us to take time to focus on ourselves it's it's as it's as unselfish as going to the gym as focusing on spiritual side of things that are happening with us we have to it's it's it, I mean, it's imperative from what you're saying, you know, it makes us a better community, makes us better, better family members. It, it makes us better employees. It makes us live longer. I mean, honestly, to look at you, you physically glow. You are, you are beautiful. And there's something people can look at you and say, you are different. You look healthy. You look peaceful. You look confident. There's something different about you. Well, thank you. It's been 82 years of working on myself. No. And so, yes. No. And it is. And I do yoga every single day. I teach every single day. And my husband, who's also 82, takes my classes as well. And so it's wow. about a commitment. But, you know, it's really that truth that they give you on the airplanes. You know, take care of yourself, put your oxygen mask on first, and then help those around you. Yeah. So first, I teach people to be loving and kind and feel they deserve that kindness, but to practice yeah. it on themselves. Yeah. And then when that happens, you free your attention in that self-centeredness, and it yeah. actually goes outward and flows almost like, like air. Yes. Down to the others. And if people feel it when they're in your your presence. Yes. They, and they, they live off the energy that you're giving. I can feel it already. I feel myself getting energized. It feels like almost in American culture, there's something, something sick and honorable in a twisted way of, oh, I'm so tired. I, I don't have enough time in my day. Like 
that's not to be commended. <laughs> you know, that's not a good thing to where we run ourselves ragged. It's when we're able to say, wow, I've maximized every moment and I'm centered and I've given of myself um, as much as I can in a controlled environment. <laughs> like that's what's to be commended, you know? I and agree that, with you. Yeah. And I and I think something else that I heard in listening to you was really you don't want to be used. You right. want to give and let your your spirit flow outward and actually enliven and support those around you. And when you are doing that, it's not exhausting. It actually is energizing to you yes. because you yes. feel connected. You feel yes. connected to others. I don't want to be dragged by someone. Right. I want to be lifted by someone. I agree. You know? I agree. Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I could talk to you all afternoon. <laughs> um, but I, I want to share the fact that you're at the London Book Fair because this is a big deal. Tell me, will you share the atmosphere? Share the spirit. Oh, my goodness. I have goosebumps. I don't know why. Um, share the Share the spirit of what's happening out there. And, I mean, this is a big deal because not only is this a gathering of some of the most prestigious authors and publishers, but it's the first gathering since the virus. So everybody's excited to see each other again. Mm -hmm. And there's a change in people prior COVID, post COVID. A lot of us have been through big transformations. We're not the same people that we were and we're meeting again for the first time. So just share with me the energy and the excitement and what's what's happening at the London Book Fair right now. Well, I agree with you. And I, this was a big decision that I made. Do I come all the way from California, where I live, mm -hmm. to London for a couple of days at the book fair? Is it worth it? And mm -hmm. then I thought, you know, this is the opportunity at hand. I'm going to go and I'm going to just give everything that I can give, no matter what the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think that there was a feeling of a lot of other people with similar intentions to share wisdom, to share stories, to share uh, their life's adventures with others. Because I think the London Book Fair connects us more in an integrated way with other human beings. And we live in a world where on television we can see people suffering and dying. And then we see other people being playful and going to concerts and living a normal life. And I think by going on with life and returning to what we once had, which was coming together in book fairs and other such venues, hmm. we're living and agreeing, okay, we're going to go out and take the risk. If there is still a little bit of a risk. And in communicating with all these people that you don't know what their, their status of health is, mm -hmm. but you kind of trust that we've got to go out of our uh, bunkers and mm -hmm. we've got to go out and start living fully again. Live so your now. These, <laughs> and all these authors and all the publishers like Maple Leaf, uh, like Lucy and, and, and Trey, who have been with me, inspiring us all, uh, is that we're getting to normal and we're going to really embrace life at the fullest level possible because we don't know what can happen. You look mm -hmm. at Ukraine, they didn't know until it happened that their whole life and their way of living was going to change. And you don't know when you're going to die. So you yeah. live fully now. And that's um, very much what I address in the book that I have. One of my, um, my particular things that goes with this image that I'm creating for you of living fully live here now is that I did have, and I don't want to really dwell on this, but I had a major tragedy in my life when my 19 year old daughter was killed suddenly in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And I write about it in this book because it came to me in a dream that I needed to find forgiveness for the person driving the car. And uh, I write about it in this book and it was so uplifting to me uh, that it was part of my process of returning to being able to feel normal again, mm -hmm. just as the Ukrainians and others, anyone that mm -hmm. has a sudden jolt in their life. And I think our whole world has felt 
this jolt from COVID, yes. you know, where the students couldn't go to their schools, their fathers and mothers couldn't go to their work. Everything changed where it was taking place. Yeah. And every, and then we were relating to people only on um, the internet. And uh, right. so it's all about this book helps what I think I felt at the, at the book fair, which is, and feel at the book fair, is that it's a time for reconnection. Mm -hmm. It's a time to be joyous. It's a time to not dwell on what has happened and stay in that place of suffering, but to mm -hmm. take risks and come out into the world and the light and uh, leave your house and your neighborhood yeah. and go, in my case, across the ocean to England, where mm -hmm. I could be with other leaders that were feeling that need to return us all to normalcy. And what better way than through books, you know? Susan, I couldn't say it better. I guess on a final note, I want to encourage you, if you are watching this video, if you're living in a great place right now, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, there's a better place for you. If you're in a dark place, there is a great place. And Susan, not only coaches on this, she walks the walk. We are we are meant to love and live our best life. And uh, I believe that this book is such a manuscript to be able to get there. Susan, I'm going to give you any final parting words. Thank you so much for being here. My parting word is to see the world and your life as filled with things that you haven't perhaps even noticed. So it's about giving gratitude instead of complaining. It's about seeing what is in front of you and being curious and joyous and realizing that life is precious. Mm -hmm. And the more you see all that's there for you to participate in and to give to others, you then become a lighter, more, um, more bright inspiration for everyone in your life, for your children, if you're a parent, for your parents, if you're a children, mm -hmm. for your grandparents, for the neighbors that you have, for others uh, who are suffering and help take, help see who they are, see who they are and give that loving kindness to them. Mm -hmm. And in order to find that, you've got to discover it for yourself. But uh, one of my essays is on about giving loving kindness when you don't feel loving or kind and you mm -hmm. don't see the bright side. So slowly returning to the light side, the bright side, climbing up out of your hole after COVID and realizing the sun is still shining. The sun is still shining. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Susan. And thank you to Maple Leaf Publishing for bringing you to the London Book Fair, for sharing you with the world. And um, just briefly, we've got it on the screen, but if you'd verbally share where your book is available, that'd be wonderful. Well, my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and most of the, the places that are accessible for everyone to buy the book. So I think you can learn more about it there as well. Wonderful. Enjoy. And also I do have a web page and my web page okay. is just my name, SusanCambigTracy.com. Okay. And Maple Leaf did my website for me and it's got a trailer about this book that will really, I believe you're even going to show the trailer. So if you do, they'll see it that way. That sounds wonderful. We will show it right after the interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy any fish and chips or any goodies that you get while you're in London and <laughs> we'll have to rejoin you again. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Live Your Now is an illustrated guide that helps you grasp the concept of chakras, wheels of energy along the spine, and transforms your negative tendencies into positive energy. Written by yoga instructor Susan Cambic Tracy and cardiologist Dr. Sandra Fallon, it features artwork by artist Sylvia Hamilton Goulden. The drawings express nuances of human energy through the use of line, shape, and color. By applying the principles outlined in the text, readers can build a fulfilling life on scientifically proven principles that heighten awareness and balance the chakras. This gem of a book features affirmations, breathing techniques, and inspirational quotes and stories. The key is practicing daily gratitude for what is, rather than focusing on what is lacking. 
Live Your Now is ideal for short but powerful daily meditations that enable you to live more fully with joy and gratitude.